got us a A500 hydraulic unit. You know it's hydraulic because we only got a three pin connector there. Uh, 25 torques on this plate right here. Remember the orientation of your speedometer even though it does have um, writing on the side here and tell you where to put what tooth count speedometer gear you have. Thirteen millimeter. Now there is a O-ring inside of here also. Actually, let's just go ahead and take that apart. So seven sixteenths or eleven millimeter. You have an O-ring inside of there. <coughs> There's an O-ring down inside on this gear. And then there's our tooth counts written right there. And then on the outside here, if you're going to be able to make this out. There's numbers printed there for what tooth count that you have. Seven sixteenths on the tail housing. I use a wobble socket. sure it feels nice and smooth. There's our shim for our overdrive section. All right, now come off. There we go. Our piston. Three-eighths. Seven sixteenths. Three quarters on our band adjustment. Take our linkage off. If it got squeezed together too tightly, you can split that apart right there and then make it easier to get it off.
one inch on the neutral switch. These are almost always leaking, almost every single rebuild I'm replacing them. And depending on what year you got is what you have. They have a three prong short, three prong long, uh, an oval shaped, and then the uh, five pin. Thirteen millimeters on the front. Thirteen millimeters on the pin. Like we got some stripped out hand bolts. <laughs> Sir, um, three, four. Shift solenoid and lock up solenoid assembly. Now, usually, I just leave the filter on here, but I need to find out what uh, <coughs> this is the earlier one. I need to find out what kind of spring is in there on the three fours. <coughs> Some of the early ones had a real thin coil spring. This one's got the thick coil. Usually these are broke, so I almost always replace them. Somebody's already put the updated uh, manual valve in it to where you can uh, eliminate the check ball and the cooler line. So I don't have to worry about buying that. Um, 7/16ths on the valve body. I almost, um, I always replace that manual valve if it has not been done. this clip right here they like to break I believe Sonic sells those somebody's already put an updated accumulator in it all right get a pry bar in right here and then I uh, pry out on that and as I'm prying out on that I'll tap on this side of the pump and just walk it out. There are holes in there that you can put a pump puller if you want to. times on these pumps this one's not going to be that way but these get really close into here and sometimes you have to use a chrome socket a half inch your washer's okay no ring cut in here or in here check the condition of your bushings 
how this surface looks right here. My pump gear. This one here is somebody put in upside down. This bevel is supposed to be facing towards the front. bit of scoring there. I think we're okay. Doesn't look that bad. I always replace the front pump and bushel. And there are several different styles of this drum here depending on what gear you got. They are interchangeable as long as uh, you got if you got a two bushing you put a two bushing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, wavy snap ring. Still pretty good looking. paperwork this one has shifting issues there's our snap ring our retainer our return spring and somebody's put a late style drum in here I'm, I think this is an earlier style unit oh yeah I know it is so somebody's updated the drum to the late style, which is not a problem. The lip seals are different. Instead of having the lip seal on the piston, it's got it inside the drum. And you have to use the steels that have the cutout. Somebody ground the, ground the steels off to make them fit in here because of this, this little triangle that's in here. So you can't put normal steel in there because it hits. So they ground the tip off so it would go. Thrust washer. Watch our ceiling rings here. Still got the green on the ceiling rings where the factory or the seal power puts it the ink stamp on it and flat snap ring a little burnt not horrible yeah we got a really wavy snap ring right here Let's see if we can get in there bevel plate make sure it's not cracked piston make sure this is not broke out back here where this washer goes there's our washer that goes on there our metal washer that goes on the output shaft the bands are a little burnt and again still not horrible pair of snap ring pliers Your intermediate shafts can come off make sure it's not scoring up inside of here this little tip is still in good shape Rear ring gear looking good. Four tab washer. Rear planet, make sure there's no side to side and no wobble to your 
pinions and they still turn nice and free. Four tab washer. So they did a pretty decent job. I mean they put new washers and everything on this thing. And snap ring pliers. For snap ring. Usually this uh, washer right here is eat into pretty good where that snap ring goes. It's a brand new washer. So later style planets. Four tab washer. Put bushings and washers and everything on this thing. Wonder what's up. Another four tab washer. Back here in the back, we got a snap ring that holds our rear band drum in. down. It's hard to know now that it popped off like that. Make sure our drum spins one way, locks the other. Make sure our drum or band surface is in good shape where our sprag rides is in good shape. Sprag, rear band, it's in good shape. Our support has come out now. Since we have the hydraulic version, these need to be open. That's where our governor tubes go in. Make sure our surface in there is nice and good where our shaft goes and where our drum rides right here. Now back here in the back, there's a recess for that pin that holds that in. I usually get these hooked ones and get down inside there, give a little squeeze to it pull my pin out. That pulls out. Pull our circuit out. A little scrub. Spring, retainer, spring. Make sure this is in good shape, not cracked. Snap ring pliers. Right. Yeah, we got a snap ring in here. First off, we're going to check. Hope you can see how much that's moving. That's moving a whole lot, so we need a shim that goes back here that they sell now. We got our snap ring pliers. We're gonna spread that snap ring. Actually, we're gonna take this out first. Pull this uh, 
snap ring out. Now we got a wavy snap ring. flat snap ring. Now we can spread that snap ring apart. That's been coming out. Now there's a bearing way back down in the bottom of that case. We're going to check that. We're also going to check where these ceiling rings ride in this housing right here. Make sure it's not ring cut. Make sure our tubes aren't screwed up. Snap ring pliers. Pull this snap ring off right here. This is a little difficult to get off. Somebody put the snap ring in upside down. And there's a little E clip right here on your pin that comes through. Pull that off. And I keep that separate because that's going to fly away. Pull your pin out. And pull your weight out. And yeah, her governor's pretty worn out. See how that's all silver right there? Bet you the other one's just like that. Alright, this is going to slide up now. We got our keyway. It goes in right here. Some of these are really small. So I'll keep that separate also because it's going to fly away. Then our weight's going to come out from the inside. And yeah, we're pretty worn out. It's governor time. This is, should be a, a gold color. It's all gone. The inside does not look too bad. See how this little tip goes in this hole back here? You got a snap ring in here. No need to take that apart. You can pull this snap ring out and this washer out if you want to. I always just load it in from the back side. So we'll be getting us a governor. Make sure your bearing's in good shape here. You gotta go out to the press and press this down so we can get this snap ring out right here. This snap ring always replace it. I don't care if if it's just been replaced or not. Uh, check this bushing out real close right here and then there's a bushing way down in the bottom of this that this uh, this tip right here rides on make sure it's in good shape but we have to go to the press press this down no need to take this snap ring out unless you need to replace something in here just leave that snap ring alone just pull this one out
So I'll be back. It's always replaced. 12864 is the number. There are two bushings down in there, especially that one down in the very bottom. Make sure it's okay. Our sprag assembly with our bearings, make sure it's nice and smooth. I just leave that all together. Our overdrive planet. Real early ones, uh, they wanted you to update with uh, this plate and bearing and the chamfer of this. Actually, I think it's this chamfer right here. I doubt you're ever going to see one that early ever again. I don't know, I've been seeing a lot of old stuff here lately. Got another bearing here. Make sure we're nice and smooth. Make sure no chips. There's two different uh, angles of the uh, pinions and the gears on this thing. And depending on how many clutches you got here is the depth of that snap ring groove right there. Okay, let me go write this one up. We'll be back. Alright, this one we got the uh, three pin short prindle switch LS kit, which is kit with clutches, cloth filter, pump bushing, 12864s that wavy snap ring, always breaks, 3 4 accumulator spring thick coil on this one. The Superior KO 126 is that shim that goes in the towel housing uh, front band, and then I uh, forgot the governor assembly. I'm going to have to take this valve body apart also. If there's any valves in there that ended up needing to be replaced, I'll uh, put that in the description. Somebody's already put a Precision of New Hampton converter in it. This one is a 5342HS, means high stall. So, I think that's it for this one. And we'll catch you on the rebuild.